The fitting is done and the specs are in. All that's left is to watch the clubs be made and take them home. Let's do it. And let's do it now. How are we doing, Matt? Hey. You well? Welcome to the truck. Welcome to where the magic goes down. Now this is pretty cool, isn't it? It is. Is this where you spend most of your yeah. life on tour? It is, yeah. We, uh, we're doing, we're probably gonna do 18 to 20 events this year with the truck. Um, so not every week, mm -hmm. we're not out every week, but, um, but yeah, we certainly cover, certainly cover enough to, yeah. uh, to be busy, that's for sure. There's a lot of uh, things going on here, Matt, very busy operational truck so for people who've not been on a tour van this is where the players will come they'll get the clubs in my case made up but they'll get them maybe tweaked lofts changed little bits like that yep so we've got loads let's show people around a little bit before we start loads of shafts over here so we carry between between up here in the workshop and underneath we have probably about ten thousand shafts ten thousand uh, shafts so we have uh we have pretty much every shaft imaginable we have older stuff for the guys who uh, don't like to change too often. Yeah. Um, and then obviously all the new stuff we get, um, we get fairly between maybe four and six months before retail. Mm -hmm. We get uh, we get a, a prototype version of each shaft to test with the guys, and then obviously feedback for Tree Temper and the guys yeah. who are the shaft manufacturers, and then they, they tweak it for retail purposes. But cool. yeah, we have obviously shafts down that end. Um, keep everything neat in that side. Um, Pretty much every grip imaginable. Um, different cores, we have 58 round, 60 round, and then 58X, which is a reminder. Um, becoming a lot more popular out on tour here yeah. is, the, is the Align. Um, a few of our guys use the, the Z cord Align, so that's yeah. a, a popular draw. Um, and then moving further up, we've got all the heads. Um, try and keep them as tidy as possible, but as you can yeah, imagine very, throughout the season, yeah. they, uh, they tend to... Who they tends to the baby out on that? Could they be? They are earmarked for a certain uh, are they? a certain James. Yeah, they're uh, they're on the workbench. So we we have orders order sheets that we stick up. So when we're busy in a tournament week, we have things that we just click into here. Yeah, going from priority. So right side takes priority. Left is the newer stuff. So we kind of work that way, um, and that's how we we keep on top of who's doing what and who's building what. And cool. But this morning, all we have on the on the on the workbench are uh, are one set of. Uh, HMB and MB blades, so we'll uh, we'll get wisdom on those shortly. So for people who haven't watched the fitting video, I don't know why you wouldn't have watched the fitting video because it makes no sense. It's a fantastic video, and Matt did a really good job of fitting my golf swing for a set of new irons. So the specs we've gone for: pitching wedge through to six iron in the MB. They look even better wrapped up, don't they? <laughs> it's funny how things look good wrapped up. <laughs> and then long irons, five iron to four iron. We have gone HMB just for actually a little bit of forgiveness because. We're all human, aren't we? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> we want to make it as easy as possible without sacrificing that uh, all-important feel. Uh, and looks, to be and fair. Looks, that's that's probably more my... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and shaft... where you're at, yeah. <clears throat> and shaft-wise, we did eventually go for the AMT Tour. And yep, you got that right. That says X100 on there, because I've been going to the gym, so we've treated myself to some extra stiff shafts, haven't we? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Let's see how they go. Yeah. Extra stiff. X. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> right, so... Building them, what what would? So what we do, we always um, it, it varies different club makers and how they do it, but the, the the main focus we have here on tour is precision. You know, we mm -hmm. want everything to be absolutely perfect. So we cut to the millimeter. So we have um, we have a, a cut list which will pop up on the screen here, which actually tells us um, exactly how to cut each shaft raw before we have it in the head. So we always cut the shafts first, we make a little mark on where we need it to be in terms of length, yep. um, and then we'll go ahead and cut that, finish it off to, with, using these two machines, so we'll raw cut that chap, um, and then we'll grind it down and make sure it's perfect in the line we need it to be. Um, we can do this because all our heads are 27 and a half mil hosel uh, depth. Mm -hmm. So um, we already know that, that the shaft's gonna be in the head 27 and a half mil, so we can then accurately cut the rest Sounds of the shaft. Sounds very precise. It is, you know, and we, we're fortunate here that we're not we're not producing, you know, 60, 70 sets a day. So yeah. we can be absolutely precise. Same with the swing weight scales. 
um, you know, we'll get on there, we'll make sure we'll glue, we'll pop it back on the swing weight scale, make sure we've got enough glue in there, um, adjust accordingly so yeah. that we are, you know, bang on where it needs to be. Yeah, and it is quite amazing when you get on these trucks because I think a lot of people think that the trucks just look kind of busy and loads of machines and I think some people just think that these machines are for show, but mm. actually every machine has its own little job and that job is just as important as the other machine's job, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. And same with our, our kind of build list, we try and work everything chronologically down the, down the truck. So yeah. we'll start up here, um, we'll, we'll get everything measured up, we'll cut, we'll finish the end of the tips, get down the end, and then we'll use the, uh, the sanding belt there to finish yeah. the tips um, so that the glue sticks nicely into the shaft. Um, and then we'll move into the gripping station here. That's yeah. a fairly unique tool. Um, I, I think we're the only guys that use something like that, which is quite fun. Yeah, I remember my fun. pro shop days, I used to just struggle on the counter. Yeah, you do it all by hand and you slide <laughs> yeah. it on. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, we're lucky with, with the truck that everything is, is purpose built. Yeah. So, you know, you can be, you can be as precise as, as, as we need to be. Yeah. So we have taken up enough of Matt's time. So he's going to crack on making these golf clubs, primarily because he's got a very busy day ahead, but also because I'm really excited to get hold of these golf clubs. So we're going to leave Matt to it and we're just going to kind of shadow him a little bit. So you see that process there guys, we've just gone through, let's say we've just gone through, Matt's just gone through, we've done a pretty good job of it as well to be fair, looking at it. Prepping the shafts, prepping the length of the shafts and now ferreling the shafts. But you did that really quickly, I was surprised how, is there a lot of kind of intricate, that feels right, go and check it, yeah. so on and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, because we're looking at those precision builds, you know, I always, once we've cut and once we've finished the, the, the back side of the cutting, we always cut from the butt side on shafts. Yeah. Uh, steel shafts anywhere with your irons. Once you've once I've cut them, I always just double check them again. So get them on the ruler, just make sure they're perfect to the millimeter. Yeah. Um, and then move on. So you know, once you've slapped it down once and you've looked at it, you know, it says nine five four and you need it to be nine five three. Yeah. You, know, you can kind of feel that just that extra yeah. mill, just a quick swipe, and then you could I guess that's it. just down to experience as well. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's you know, it's always Always good. I always check. Um, you know, always check that it's right, rather than yeah. being a, you know blasé and just yeah. Um, feels you know, right. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Only thing we didn't discuss down in the studio, which is easy to do up here because we've got everything on display. Grip wise, you know, okay. any preference on grip, cord, non. -cord. I quite fancy a bit of a reminder in the back there. If... Yeah, they're becoming super popular. Yeah. I mean, I have one in my driver and actually I do find a bit more fairway since. Yeah, so we've got the, the tour bell, but obviously now Golf Pride are doing that in the Align. You've yeah. got um, both multi-compounds and obviously slightly different colours there. Yeah, do really like those actually. The green, yeah, yeah. they're really, really cool. They're, uh, they were a limited edition, um, but yeah, they've just got that really pronounced reminder Can I have down those? the back. Yeah, yeah, we'll put those yeah. on, yeah. Do you know why green's my favourite colour, Matt? I don't know if you know, guys, but I did go to the Masters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we always put these on for Eddie. We always put these on for Eddie because uh, obviously this was Eddie's first Masters this year. Yeah. And, uh, and when they came in, Alex and I both, both looked at each other and thought, yeah, that'd be a perfect, uh, <laughs> yeah. perfect nudge. Uh, I'll probably just go two layers. Two I layers, think. yeah. What size blood Medium, medium. Yeah. Yeah. Two layers, pretty good. Yeah, if, if it's too, so I always find that if the grip's too thin, I start to turn the hands over a little bit. Yeah. So that extra little bit of tape does make a little bit of difference for me to hold it off a little bit more. It does, yeah. I think, you know, again, it comes down to the, the custom side of things is people just, I think there's one thing sometimes people overlook a little bit. Is, yeah. You know, layers of tape can make quite a nice difference. I knew a guy, or knew a guy, I know a guy that goes one layer in the bottom hand, three layers in the top hand. Yeah. Yeah, That's got him. Does, that. does he? Yeah, he builds it up. So he will do. He'll do one full length, and then he'll do a quarter, 
half, another quarter, and kind of just delete. That is, that is fine, isn't it? Yeah, oh, that's... just he'll, he'll delete the, um, basically the, the Golf Pride have almost done it themselves now by taking away the taper yeah. and the plus fours. You know, they're, they're, the whole idea behind those was to be able to take away um, that slight taper that every shaft naturally yeah. has. I guess it's different when you're one of the best players in the world, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you can He's have... great, Paul. He actually always comes and does his own grips. He's always like, hey. you know, I really want to be prime. And he, oh, I like it, you know. It's yeah. no, 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 it's no um, disrespect I must to admit, us. if you are a golf person, this whole workshop is just an absolute dream, isn't it? Like you could spend all down here playing with... Yeah. I bet you when you first started working here, it was like, oh, what can I do now? But I still do, you know, you still do. You know, as it, as it comes down to you, you're still a golfer at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. So the enjoyment of golf, everything to do with golf you know when we get new grips in when we get new shafts in if you don't get excited about that then you're yeah. in the wrong place you yeah know? you are you know what really excited me i walked past and just saw that with a bit of a yeah we got some new stamps so uh we have a we have quite a funny drawer here that we have the uh what's called the graveyard so we have uh <laughs> that's where all our all our either old heads or um missed stamps uh things that are wrong with all yeah. our heads all end up in here, so they they become our kind of practice stamp heads. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I've just been chatting away with Matt there, and if anybody remembers the zero lofted iron, that was Matt's baby. Matt was behind that. Some great craftsmanship going in that. <laughs> I love the stamp on it as well. The, the skull and crossbow, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, good luck, that's going to need... Uh, Just finished need... it off nicely, that one. It's going to need a bit of launch to get that going. So interesting process here, we're putting the grips on before the heads are on. That's, that's it. Not something I've seen before. What, what is the reason behind that? So we do that so that we can... Um, you, we used to dry build with um, kind of a broken grip. Yeah. And then you'd, uh, you'd slide the grip onto the shaft and you'd swing weight it that way. Um, but because we've already got the, the hosel depth, we know that's 27.5. We know what it's the, the each butt cap is mm -hmm. in terms of mill, so we can um, we can actually put the grip on and then swing weight the head on the grip with the shaft and everything as one, yeah. um, and then adjust accordingly. So it's just again, it's just it comes down to that accuracy again. It's trying to get um, as, as many variables um, take away as many variables as we can. So yeah. you know, as soon as we put the glue in, that's the only thing we have to add to this once we swing weighted it in the scale. So. It's a nice easy way of keeping everything precise. And speaking of glue, as soon as these clubs set, we get 20 minutes, then we are back on the range hitting them, which I absolutely cannot wait for. That's gotta be a big draw for people coming to get new golf clubs, hasn't it? It is, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just a, an awesome tool. And we've had guys in throughout the year is, you know, you, you stand on the truck and you watch them being built, which again is a, is a rarity. You know, you don't often get that. Um, but then we'll go down the range and you know, we'll get back out and track them and make sure they're behaving. You know, we've had to change a couple of uh, lofts and a few guys' irons just to make sure that the gapping was good. Yeah. Um, you know, little things like that, which we, we, uh, we can spend the time doing when we're here as opposed to, um, you know, your normal retail setup. Yeah. When you're in no rush, you know, building clubs is very uh, almost therapeutic. You know, it's uh, there's a bit of art, there's a bit of individuality. Yeah. You, know, you can put your own spin on clubs. You know, at the end when you when you turn down ferrules, that's kind of um, your touch on each individual club. You know, because yeah. you are actually finishing the ferrules and you're making them as as clean as possible. So that kind of you can tell a a, a trainee club builder versus a. Uh, a half decent one by the ferals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're always a telltale. I always remember, so when you do your PGA training, a lot of people actually ask about PGA training and the process you have to go through. You do have to do a club building exam. Now, I'm no Matt McIsaac when it comes to building golf clubs. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. And I did get through the exam, but one of my friends who has actually been on the channel, Chris, I'm gonna tell a story and he's probably not gonna like it, but we're making these clubs up and He's got the right shaft length, he's cut that down, perfect, no problem. He's trying to get the grip on and he's put, he, I mean, Yorkshire folk obviously were a little bit tight, so he's trying to save on the white spirit. So Matt knows what's happening here now, don't you? Because No man's land. No, what you can't do once you've started to put a grip on is go back. No. <laughs> no, you are in no man's land there. You can't get it on, you can't get it off. Oh, I just remember the examiner walking around saying, 
what are you doing? And he's like walking around with his grip. No! <laughs> <laughs> so we'll leave Matt to finish those grips off just now. And what I want to show you is a part of the tow truck which the players might just come in, they might just chill out, relax. We actually have Sky on here, it's not on at the moment. But nice little bench there where you can come sit down, do a bit of work, chill out. Lovely little area actually, just to relax. So I think we'll take a seat here just while Matt finishes the grips up. Okay, so grips all done, Matt. What is next up? Grips all done. So next we head into, um, as we mentioned a minute ago, the um, uh, the swing weighting. So as we've now got shafts and grips as, as one, um, we can pop each individual head on, um, make sure it's perfectly swing weighted, allowing for a smidge of glue. Um, and then once we've glued them up, we'll pop them back on here just to make sure that they're perfect again. And then we'll stick on the drying rack and wait for them to dry. So, so you'll notice on these, when I unbadge these, they've all got weights on. Yeah. Um, so when they come over from Japan, we actually get a, a spec list, um, which actually goes through the box and tells us the exact loft, the exact lie, and the exact head weight of each head. So um, it's a way when we unpack the, when we get the box through of heads from Japan, yeah. we can just go through them and sort them into perfect weights mm -hmm. so that each individual is set. So we will then file them into here under different weights. Um, so each four to pitching wedge set will be as tight as it can for weight. Okay. So again, just so that we don't have to, on a seven iron say, put an eight gram weight in, yep. and on the eight iron we put a two gram weight in. Yeah, you know? yeah. So you're just keeping that kind of constant, so everything, um, everything sits in line as it should. forged mess <laughs> <laughs> we're just taking a little bit out so it's not it's not masses yeah but that's probably about two grams which hopefully is going to get that down to where we need it to be so see that's perfectly balanced in there nicely at d3 yeah that way it's good to go so swing weights done Next up, we are just going to glue the heads on because that helps, doesn't it, Matt? <laughs> Make sure they're nicely on there, yeah. Make sure they're nicely on, and then we're going to go and hit a few. Now, I must say, I've obviously not filmed the whole process because it's quite a long process, but I can't believe how meticulous Matt's been with every single club head. So, I showed you a couple of shots of him drilling out the heads. So, if the heads are a little bit heavy for the swing weight that we're looking for, he'll just drill a little bit out of the hosel. Yeah. Just yep. He'll just drill a little bit out of the hosel, take a tiny bit of weight out, check it, take it again, take it out. Really, really fine margins here, which is very impressive actually. So what we're going to do here is just put a tiny little bit of fishing wire just down the hosel there. So what, we'll, what that does is allow us to move the head and clean the head out with the glue, but it sits tight once it's in there. So we've just literally <laughs> stuck that in. Is that a trick of the but trade or is that, that's um, unbelievable? That's something that we do here, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what, I mean, we don't spend any other time with any other brands, but um, just popping that in there, you know, that head there is almost almost set. So it just helps the, helps the gluing process, but also helps us to now line the grip up. Yeah, when, we, when we're trying to maintain swing weights, uh, it's always important to try and and put the exact same amount of glue in each head because again, it's adding weight to each head. So having one fine coat of glue on the shaft, yep. we'll pop our swing weight in there. And we've already got the right amount in the hosel. Add a bit of, uh, bit of fish wire. And we're gonna slide that in. I never thought it would be this I'll keep using the word meticulous, and that's <laughs> just the right word, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah, it is. You know, and there's there is a lot to club building that sometimes when you when you buy online or when you're buying from your from your local pro, sometimes you overlook a little bit. It's the, the attention to detail that goes in. You know, our factory up in Commodore is fantastic for it as well. They're they're a really tight ship where you know 99.9% .9 of everything goes through a very very fine comb. So it's uh, it's a good setup all round.
Now I'm not going to say that these are potentially the best looking set of clubs you've ever built, Matt, because you've built a lot of clubs as we said, but they do look pretty special, don't they? They do, yeah. I never get tired of, uh, of looking down on those new MP20s. They're uh, awesome looking head. Awesome looking. This will be the final job, won't it now, Matt? This is, yeah, we're going to give them a quick loft and lie check. Uh, that's the last, last box to tick. Um, yeah, and then we'll head down to the studio. Looking forward to hitting these. Don't have to hit them, I'll just look at them. <laughs> <laughs> Pop them in a frame. Yeah. So guys, Matt is just finishing the clubs off. We're just, what we're doing, acetoning the ferrules. Yeah. So making them nice and shiny. Uh, again, I, I keep saying the word meticulous. I cannot believe how much effort and... Oh, I can't even think of the word. Attention to detail. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't believe how much attention to detail has gone into these golf clubs. We're now going to check the loft and lies, and then comes the really exciting bit. In fact, no, this has been the exciting bit. <laughs> it's been really good watching these get made, actually. So the thing you'll find on a lot of our sets straight from Japan, because the tolerances are so tight, um, we rarely have to move these too much. You yeah. know, we're talking maybe a quarter of a degree difference just to get them bang on. But on the whole, because of... Uh, because of the process they go through in the factory, they more often than not spot on. So that there is 63.46, which is bang on. Perfect. Perfect. And that is that. that. Is a, a set of bats already. Done and dusted. Matt, thank you so much. They look absolutely awesome. Awesome. Cheers, pal. Thank you very much. Absolutely. So I'm not going to lie, it feels like Christmas Day. These look absolutely awesome. Thank you so much to everyone at Mizuno. The whole process has been amazing from start to finish. Uh, can't speak highly enough about this guy. He's taking a well-earned drink there. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much, Matt. I think there's one thing left to do, isn't there? Let's go hit them. We're gonna have to hit them. Absolutely. Now you can always tell a good fit because generally what we're trying to do is hit the centre of the club more often than not, aren't we? Correct. First swing with the new clubs. Oh, stop it. <laughs> it's actually perfect. It's so perfectly middled. I'm never hitting the iron again. <laughs> we'll just put that one in the front. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I guess, Matt, that's where you kind of take the satisfaction as well, that the jobs, I mean, first swing is a warm-up. We weren't even really going to be filming that, but it's perfect, isn't it? It is, you know, and that's where... When we come back down here after we fit and build, you know, we, we really want to be seeing the results that we saw when we were using the fitting stuff, but just overall picture feels a whole lot more solid. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, low on the face, it wasn't, it wasn't coming straight out of the centre, but that drop off is nowhere near as extreme. Yeah. What will that be down to, Matt? Will that be? It's just the design of the head, and it's, it, it's, it's quite difficult to make a very sexy looking head that still has the weight in the correct spots. Yeah. Whereas the blade, it's, it's nowhere near as knifey as some of our previous blades, so there still is a, there is a ton of weight in the, in the right spots. But we've just taken a little bit off the top line to kind of suit the eye down at the dress. It still yeah. looks real sexy, but performance, you can get away with shots like yeah. that. That's a nice shot, I like that. Yeah, a bit toey that one as well, actually. Was it? Yeah. Oh, stop it, Matt. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so what tour should I try and get on? <laughs> <laughs> so that brings probably one of the best days of my life to an end. So Matt, thank you so much for your time. Anytime. Really appreciate that. It's been such an insight into not only what happens on a tour van, but how things like that are made because they look absolutely beautiful. I actually can't wait to go and play golf now. So thanks a lot. Anytime. Really, really appreciate it. Guys, and also I really appreciate you watching, so thank you very much for your time as well. If you have enjoyed that, please make sure you do leave us a like. If you haven't hit that subscribe button already, I don't know why you wouldn't do, because otherwise you're gonna miss the great golf-related content that I bring to you guys every single day. Make sure you hit those comments below and let me know exactly which Mizuno irons you're looking forward to trying the most. And as always, 
Als je het maar.